On Bloomberg West, we had LeVar Burton, of all people, not too long ago, who said, you know, there was a time when the devices that we were using on Star Trek, you didn't see anywhere. Then the iPad came around. Wow, that kind of changed things for us. What about now space travel? Something that I know you think a lot about these days. That's right. Well, it's becoming remarkably affordable. It's uh, something that when we grew up as kids in the 60s and 70s, we would dream that one day we might fly to the moon and only a few select could. Now, it's at the cusp of becoming commercially viable to not just go into orbit around Earth, but to go to the moon, to go to Mars. And that's largely because the cost of accessing space is plummeting. What, what will be ultimately the ter determining factor in all of that? You know, obviously there are some big plans for lunar voyages or at least one lunar voyage in the, in, in the years to come where participants are willing to pay upwards of $150 million each. That clearly means there's demand. What else has to happen for that all to become a reality? That's right. The $150 million is old technology and quite expensive. SpaceX alone will lower that price about tenfold and then another tenfold still. So it might be $1 to $5 million for the same trip just five to ten years from now. And the way they do that is by redesigning the whole rocket from the ground up, then reusing the booster so you don't throw them away after every flight. Imagine you threw away an airplane after every flight. Only weirdos and governments and wannabe governments could fly. That's pretty much rocketry of the past. In the future, it's going to be available to many. So the spacecraft manufacturing mm -hmm. has to pick up steam. It I mean, has. I've, I've, it I've, already I think has. We've, we've heard Eric mm -hmm. Anderson talk about, you know, created like works of art, we got to pick up the pace. That's right. Well, then, so that call to action, it's interesting. I first read about it in 1969 by Arthur Clarke, talking about futurists who wrote, you know, 2001 A Space Odyssey. He said, we have to redesign the rocket to reuse the booster. It's the most important thing to make space access affordable. He said that when Apollo 11 was flying to the moon. Today, SpaceX is finally doing it. It's the only company that is trying to make the booster reusable. Well, and, you know, talk about futurists. I think a lot of people would put Elon Musk in that camp. What did you see in Elon in the beginning when he started talking about SpaceX? Well, we knew Elon from when he first came to California. We pitched us on his first business, and then we spoke to him about his second business. We invested in his cousins twice. We invested in him three times. So we love the family. Um, by the time we got to talking about SpaceX, which wasn't his first startup, um, we already knew that he was a remarkable person, an incredible entrepreneur, unlike any other, perhaps on this planet, to be able to revolutionize many different industries in a way that everyone else has failed to do. So when he was pitching SpaceX, we saw the spark in his eye, the passion he had to colonize Mars to actually become a space-faring species. You don't hear that from most entrepreneurs who just try to change the world. He's thinking, let's change other worlds as well. What has all this, the, the, the investments mm -hmm. where SpaceX is now, what has it taught you about where the space business is going? Yeah, well, there's a lot of change. Um, in the past, the space business was largely governmental activity and a jobs program. How can we take something like the space shuttle and divvy it up across many states to create many different kinds of jobs that can roll up into a political ball that costs billions of dollars per launch? In a business world where I come from, you would never do things that way. You wouldn't purposely make something more complex than it needs to be to achieve a goal. And as a business person, this is an industry ripe for improvement, right? You don't rarely find a business that's been sheltered from real competition from business minds for decades. And the role of government going forward, in your opinion, is? I think perhaps to set, and this is just a personal opinion, yeah. to set the exploration agenda. If you think about what NASA really does best and what we think of it as, it's the, it's the organization that says, well, let's do things that may not have an immediate commercial payoff, but are incredible feats of human engineering to explore the solar system, to understand the world we live in, that may one day percolate into a business, but sort of push the frontiers, the final frontier, if you will. I think commercial space, it, you know, business of space, is much more, let's put satellites into orbit for imaging the Earth every day, for communications, for cable television, for everything we come to rely on from our satellites. That's, that's good for business. Why would NASA do that? And right. I think that's, nat that's already happening. That's already naturally separating. So you're the kid who dreamed about space. Mm -hmm. and went to space camp. And, yeah. and went to space camp and sees the future with yourself in space. I oh, mean, absolutely. Tell us about your ambitions. Well, I am going to wait about five years because I know it's going to get cheaper and safer by waiting. It's not as if you had to get on that bandwagon on Apollo and if you missed it, you know, you wait 20 years before someone's flying again. Here, it's just going to get better and better. And what I want to wait to do is fly uh, first around the Earth um, as a tourist, taking photos to be able to just see and absorb in a zen-like moment the beauty of our Earth, which, by the way, flying around the Earth will cost less than flying a private plane around the Earth. No question. That is absolutely for sure. Then, slightly more expensive, uh, to go around the moon and to fly very low, maybe 5,000 feet off the top of the surface, because there's no atmosphere. You can be in orbit around the moon, very close to it, and just go in a spacewalk like Superman for hours. 
right? Don't land because then you'll be stuck in one small area. See the whole moon. Spend a few days there and come home.